Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kaifit Labs. In today's video, we're going to talk about the properties of waves. We're going to start by looking at what are waves. We're going to look at the two main types or categories of waves. We're then going to look at four particular properties, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and velocity. All right, so what are waves? Well, waves are essentially a scientific concept or model that we use to explain energy transfer. So a form of energy transfer, a way that energy can be transferred or moved from um, one object or one place to another. Okay, that we're saying that waves come about, or this energy transfer comes about because of oscillating particles. That is, particles that are moving backwards and forwards in a certain rhythmic pattern. Those particles might be moving up and down, side to side. They might be, you know, big objects like a like a boat in a in the ocean, or small objects like at the, you know, electrons or you know subatomic particles or somewhere else in between. And so that these oscillating particles, these particles moving backwards and forwards, transfer energy in some way to their surroundings, to, the, to other objects over long distances, short distances, whatever it might be. But the concept of waves helps us to explain this energy transfer efficiently, effectively, and with clarity. Um, because there are certain things about these waves we can describe that allow us to, to make more sense of how this energy transfer works. Okay, we look at this idea that there are two broad types or categories of waves based on what those oscillations look like. So the first one we call transverse waves. So for both of these, we can visualize a slinky. Someone holding the end of the slinky and then shaking it up and down. So the source or the oscillating particle moves up and down, but the energy is transferring from, you know, from left to right. You know, if I can kind of get the direction right for the camera. So the coils are vibrating up and down, you get this, this kind of wavy pattern, but the energy is traveling along the slinky. So we say that the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of the wave or the direction of the energy transfer. They're at right angles. The other type of wave though, is where the source is moving left and right. That is parallel to the direction of the wave. So you imagine holding the slinky nice and taut and letting go of some of those links or pushing them in and out, that then it kind of moves backwards and forwards along that the direction of the slinky. We call those longitudinal waves because the oscillations are parallel rather than perpendicular. Okay, so some scientific terminology there that helps us to try and understand that these different types of waves come about for different reasons. What are the particles doing when they're oscillating? Which direction is it happening relative to the direction of the wave itself? But for simplicity, we're going to be explaining some of these properties using the picture of a transverse wave. It's just easier for us to visualize. The same kind of concept will apply to both types of waves, but it just helps us to be able to, to know what we're talking about a little bit more clearly. So we're now going to go through those four properties. So the first one is amplitude. So amplitude, the, the scientific definition we're talking about here is the maximum displacement, that is the straight line shortest distance of a particle from its undisturbed or equilibrium position. Okay, so if we think about our, our wave here, the undisturbed or equilibrium position is that line through the middle. The amplitude is the maximum height or di maximum distance away from that middle position. Okay, so it's essentially, in layman's terms, the height of the wave or the distance between that middle point and the top or bottom of the wave. We measure it in meters because it's a physical distance when we're talking about these sorts of waves. Now you can see in the bottom image, we've got two different waves, two different lines. One has a smaller amplitude, that is the distance is smaller between that straight line and the top of the wave. One has a larger amplitude because it is a, a larger distance. You can see that lots of other things about these waves are the same, but the amplitude is different. The secondly, we're now going to look at wavelength. What about if we're looking at distance along a wave? That is, it's the wavelength is the distance between one point on a wave and to the equivalent point on the next wave. So the top of one wave to the top of the next wave, the bottom of one wave to the bottom of the next wave, the midpoint of one wave to the midpoint of the next wave. It's measured in meters and it's a physical length. And we give it the symbol of lambda, that which is this kind of weird kind of curly triangly sort of um, Greek letter for L. So lambda is how we pronounce it. That's how we refer to wavelength. We can see that, you know, that that's what's being referred to in these images here. And then it also applies in, in longitudinal waves. We're kind of looking at, at picking equivalent points on two waves. 
we can see that in that the image at the bottom here that we have two different wavelengths. That is, we've got two waves that have a different gap between one wave and the next. B has a longer wavelength than C because the gap is, is larger between the waves. And now we look at frequency. Frequency is a bit harder for us to actually find an image of because it's something relates to the motion of the wave. That is, the frequency is defined as the number of waves passing a given point for each second that that wave is traveling. Okay, so if we picture these rather than as static kind of images, but actually waves that are moving in a certain direction, that then we will have a, a different number of waves passing a, a point. You know, if you were observing it, you would be counting a different number of waves passing you for every second. We measure it in units called Hertz, which has a, an abbreviation of HZ, but in, in scientific terms is equivalent to per second, that is seconds to the minus one. So Hertz is the unit of frequency. The higher the frequency, the more waves per second. So we can see that if we're talking about them traveling at the same speed, wave C would have more waves passing you for every second that you're, you're looking or observing than wave B. So it has a higher frequency than wave B. And now we look at our last one, which is called velocity. So velocity is the speed at which the wave travels in its direction. Okay, so we're thinking about, it's a, it's a measure of distance over time. Now velocity of a wave very much depends on the medium in which it's traveling. If it's a wave that, that is affected by the medium. So a denser medium, that is more particles of the substance that it's passing through, will slow down the speed of the wave. So we think about the speed of sound, um, you know, is this kind of affected like this? But if we think about more particularly light, you know, speed of light in a vacuum is faster than a speed of light through glass, through water, or something else like that, which slows down the um, the the wave. Sound, I, I realise in mentioning it is perhaps a little different because sound is a wave that depends on having particles to pass that energy along. So it's not the best one to, to visualise here. But a denser medium means slower speed, um, and so you know, a shorter amount of distance per second. Velocity, like in, in other things that we're thinking about, is measured in meters per second. Okay, so we can see here that, you know, the, that we have uh, the waves kind of, we, we're taking but from five seconds to 25 seconds to pass from one wave to the next. So the time difference there and the distance allows us to be able to work out how fast it is going. Okay. So we looked at what are waves, a form of energy transfer based on oscillating particles. We looked at the idea that depending on what those oscillations are doing, that we get two types of waves, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Are the oscillations perpendicular or parallel to the, way, the direction the wave is traveling in? And we looked at the four key properties, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and velocity that help us to describe and define what is happening to waves. It applies to transverse waves and longitudinal waves, but helps us to be able to actually talk about these waves um, more logically, more clearly, and in a way that describes ideas more um, succinctly. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.